Okay, I wanted to um, present this uh, topic on uh, the kaleidoscope of effective gamification. We had a poster that we had designed and uh, presented yesterday at the poster presentation. And myself, uh, I come from a strange uh, you know, background in the sense that uh, I'm an industrial designer, and I've said this before in my earlier presentation la yesterday about uh, task management applications. Strangely, uh, coming from industrial design uh, with more than 17 years of experience, I've designed products for, for companies as a consultant. And uh, for using that as, a, as an experience, you know, you come to game design, it's, it's such an awesome field, and you tend to try and correlate you know, some of those uh, best practices that you've done in uh, product design and try to relate that to, to game design. So right now, I'm doing my PhD at, uh, at uh, University of Ontario, Institute of Technology, under the able supervision of Dr. Leonard Nake, who is uh, research director at uh, the uh, Gamer Lab. So, uh, why are we doing this at all? In, in the first, is the first question that uh, that we asked ourselves: is that you know we want a framework. There are so many frameworks available, and uh, there are many theories available in terms of design and how to do how to how to create gamification or how to create uh, game design strategies for different, uh, for different uh, uh, applications. But we thought, I mean, well, let's, let's see a panel between human-centered innovation that we have in uh, industrial design versus uh, creating some sort of like relevance in terms of game design. And uh, often at times, you know, these terminologies can be quite confusing to a, the business community. In terms of when you look at research, there's a lot of terminologies, a lot of, you know, complex, uh, um, you know, models available. So we thought, okay, Let's add to the complexity and add our own model to it, you know, so one more additional model to this entire mix. But our aim was to try and, you know, create a, an initial basic theoretical framework so that we can try and bridge the gap between uh, research and its applicability to, uh, to business applications. So um, here, this is our basic uh, model here where we look at uh, the simplified version of a framework. I uh, hope you don't get mesmerized by, this, by these circles in here. <laughs> but uh, what we see here is that we have at the center, we have the effective gamification core, we have motivated behavior layer, we have the game experience layer, then we have the game design process layer, and then we have the perceived layer of fun. I think Amy uh, uh, and uh, Zach also mentioned about a few of these elements in terms of like creating the experience and the design process, but we wanted to try and see, can we go through in terms of like a formulae uh, or for, for defining business applications. So when you look at some of these uh, uh, individual layers, this is the complex model that we have. But just to go through uh, how, the, how we went about building this model is essentially we have, at the center we have the uh, intrinsic motivation on the left side and, and extrinsic motivation on the right side. You might wonder why is it half and half. It is not. This is just like a freeze frame position in time. But right now we have half and half, but we're thinking of in terms of like can this be an interactive app where we can, in certain cases, the intrinsic motivation is higher. In certain cases, the extrinsic motivation can be higher on the other side. So that becomes our, uh, our motivated behavior layer, layer. Why is this important? Because when we look at uh, trying to define a creative a business application or, or a design, we have to determine what the motivation behind that, behind that application should be for the potential users. How can they get motivated to even to even get excited about this specific application if they are actually not interested in being present or engaged at all? For example, if I'm a person uh, interested in sustainable living and I'm interested in kind of like looking at energy cons conservation, uh, if that is an intrinsic motivation, internalization aspect from my point of view, I should be interested in looking at an application <coughs> that helps to conserve energy, or in, interested in looking at an, a gamified application that looks at, say, for example, dry clean as we have in, as in Ontario. So for that, we represent that as a motivated behavior layer. The next layer becomes the experience layer. This is similar to Disney. You know, from our experiences in, in relating to the concept of theme park design, you know, I mean, you have the motivation, and then you have to design the brand experience in terms of like how the experience is actually supporting your motivation for the users or players in that specific realm of, uh, of participation. So this here, we have uh, actions, achievements, and challenges. Uh, we have detailed de details in our paper in terms of like, how each one of those areas could actually be defined in terms of creating this experience for, uh, for our individual people. 
We have the game design process layer where we talk about these elements of design, but we look at how these elements of design are not just elements, but system processes. So you can take each one of these elements or attributes and then use that as a, a sustainable process in itself to create the human interaction touch points or the experience touch points so that that is what your user or your player is actually playing in. And this is where I can relate back to Amy Joe's uh, uh, engagement framework where she talked about how the engagement and the sustaining engagement can take place in this layer. So you can actually use this uh, from, that, from, this pers from that perspective onwards. Finally, what's the point of any of this if we don't have the fun aspect of this entire process? So you've got to ask yourself as to what is fun? What is, what is, what is the concept of uh, being able to create the excitement, the surprise element in your design concepts so that the fun layer excites the player in terms of trying to connect with your design. So this is kind of like an interactive framework in Flux. So we have a player viewpoint where the player sees the, the perceived layer of fun to the designer's view, uh, and the designer viewpoint is on the right side where they go through the motivated behavior layer, game experience layer, process, and the layer of fun. And how does it affect and help business? So we can see that from the business point of view, what's important is that you've got to ask the bigger picture. Before you, even I discuss and design a, any application, you've got to discuss, discuss and define what is your unique selling proposition. So that's why we feel that the kaleidoscope model that we see here, which is a side view of our design, exists at the intersection of business player and designer, so which allows us to actually define the USP for your uh, business enterprise. It helps us to define the innovation strategy for your business enterprise and also helps us to also define the operations plan. Then once you define this, then you can spend the time and money invested into creating the game elements and the other, uh, and the other engagement framework. So that's why we see that this is a, in conclusion, we see that this is a complex model, but an initial framework, a theoretical framework that is up for discussion, for debate. So we kind of like try to see how we could create the process of relationships between each of these layers. So define the motivation, define the experience, then define the human interaction test points using Amy Joe's interaction framework or engagement framework to help us define our, uh, our guidelines and our checklists. So once again, thank you very much for listening, and uh, I open the floor for questions. Thank you very much.